Well, uh, hi, uh, I am Dr. Mohamed Bargahi. Today, my presentation is about the effect of balloon balloon on dyspnea and oxygenation in non-critical adult COVID-19 patient. It was a pilot randomized clinical trial. My colleagues were Nafi Serasku, Farzan Aryan Neja, Sohrab Ismailzadeh, Romina Nehmati, Mehdi Ghaibi, Arezu Bajalan, and with uh, a valuable cooperation of my dear teacher, Dr. Suhail Sultani. Uh, this study was registered at the Iranian Registry of Clinical Trial, and this study was supported mainly by Galvin University of Medical Science. Well, uh, so, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, or on a short way SARS-CoV-2, has been designated as the cause of a highly infectious pandemic uh, called coronavirus uh, disease 2019 or as we know it, COVID-19. Uh, this virus is spread mainly through uh, respiratory droplets and uh, the main uh, form of between humans, the close contact. The presentation of COVID-19 are highly variable. Most of the patients, about 80% of them, experiencing a mild or no symptoms, and minority of them suffering from pneumonia, severe respiratory failure, or acute respiratory distress syndrome at the end stage. And the uh, mortality rate is about 3 to 5% less in developed countries, and uh, maybe about 5 uh, in uh, developing countries. Well, uh, SARS-CoV-2 attacks the respiratory epithelial cells, causing cough, dyspnea, and fever, which are the most common presentation of the disease. This virus induces uh, exudates of serous fluid, fibrin, and helium membrane formation within the alveoli. Uh, chest TS can may show varying patterns of lung involvement, including bilateral multilubar lung glass pacification with uh, preflar or orbit. Uh, posterior distribution mainly in the lower lobes and parenchymal uh, pathologies alteration in the form of uh, exudative diffuse alveolar damage or on a short way DAD are also seen with uh, different degrees of extension well uh, here in the left picture you can see GGO patterns uh, which are shown by uh, white arrows in the left picture and uh, you can see also the different extension of COVID-19 in um, uh, patients uh, with the COVID-19 uh, in his uh, chest CT scan. Well, these pathologies can cause a profound hypoxemia with near normal arterial carbon dioxide levels due to uh, unventilated lung units and also ventilation perfusion mismatch. And as the disease progresses, uh, these measures can cause inability to go gas exchange, often resembles uh, typical ARDS. Additionally, acute lung injuries elicit uh, systemic uh, inflammation and increased blood inflammatory cytokine expression, which uh, this leads uh, to cytokine storm at the end stages of uh, disease. Well, uh, this schematic shows uh, the VQ mismatch uh, phenomenon between the alveoli and capillary and how it uh, happens. And uh, as you can see in the A side, uh, we can uh, see normally the gas exchange uh, uh, happens between the alveoli space and the capillary. And when the unventilated uh, lung units uh, progress uh, as the disease progress too, uh, we can see the inability to gas exchange or uh, even its decrease. And uh, we can expect uh, even um, uh, the shunt phenomenon uh, between the unventilated parts of lung and capillary at the end stage of uh, disease. Well, uh, the prognosis of the disease is really unclear up to now, but generally 20% of uh, patients need hospitalization. One third of them experience uh, ARDS during their hospital stay. And uh, studies have shown that early pulmonary ablation or PR on a short way intervention within two days of admission can uh, reduce mortality in patients with uh, community acquired uh, pneumonia and interstitial 
pneumonia. Uh, the primary objectives of uh, PR uh, in this stage are to promote airway clearance and prevent uh, complication of acute illness-related immobilization. Proper incorporation of PR into medical treatment could promote uh, effective expectoration, facilitate mucus clearance, and mobilize uh, secretion to the upper airways, thereby improving lung volume, perfusion, and oxygenation. In addition, uh, PR may help to prevent or mitigate cycle related to bed rest, thus improving uh, physical function and outcomes, uh, and it uh, reducing uh, the length of uh, hospital stay by increasing ventilator free days. Also, there is uh, still uh, no evidence about the efficacy of PR in the specific setting of COVID-19, but uh, several established physiotherapy techniques are safely recommended to improve outcomes uh, through the different countries. Uh, and uh, PR is a, a widespread uh, topic, but uh, briefly we can uh, say that it has uh, different techniques, including breathing exercises, uh, or in a short way, BE and uh, chest physiotherapies. Well, uh, balloon blooming exercise or BBE is a simple, cost-effective, uh, non-personal dependent breathing exercise that can improve lung capacities and respiratory function in people who suffer from um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, lower respiratory tract disorders, or in uh, elderly smokers. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first trial uh, of the use of a specific uh, breathing exercise in COVID-19 patients in the acute setting, and we aim to evaluate the effect of BB on dyspnea and oxygenation in COVID-19 patients in the acute phase. So uh, for that, we selected uh, the, uh, our participants from patients admitted to non-intensive care unit of uh, Buali Sina Hospital in Ghazvin in Iran. This, uh, that. Uh, it was designated for uh, COVID-19 patients by the relevant governmental co uh, committee from August 15 to October 31, 2020. Uh, the inclusion criteria were uh, age uh, uh, greater or equal 18 years old, a definitive COVID-19 diagnosis, positive PCR or chest CT positive, first day of admission in the ward, a presence of dyspnea according, according to the patients, and uh, uh, peripheral oxygenation, oxygenation, saturation, or SpO2 uh, less than 94%. And exclusion criteria were uh, pregnancy, history of lung disease, kidney disease, those who were under treatment, heart disease or neurological disease, allergy to latex or balloon material, contraindication to intensive activity, or uh, and five, a need for hospitalization in the intensive care unit, internal or cardiac, based uh, on the announced a fellow chart of the Iranian Ministry of Health Service edition. Uh, this is the had a randomized control uh, design. The patient who met the inclusion criteria were selected and divided into two groups, including intervention and control groups based on uh, random number blocks designed by Excel. Uh, both groups received the same treatments and oxygen therapy according to the uh, announced fellow chart, as I said. Well, uh, the intervention group was instructed to blow into a balloon at least five sets a day, each uh, set uh, consisting of five repetitions of BBE in the supine position uh, with, uh, without any uh, pillow uh, under their head, and uh, they were instructed to inflate the balloon, uh, rest, as, uh, re rest as long as they required and then blow it again for each set. For BBE, the patients were asked to take a drip, uh, take a deep breath for two or five seconds, hold it in for two seconds, and then inflate the balloon as many times as they could. As a substitute for the balloon, when the patient was unable to inflate it, a latex glue size six was used. Uh, the balloon and latex glue were replaced every day. Uh, and 11-inch oval rubber uh, rubber balloons uh, were used. Well, uh, the following data uh, were collected from the patient on day one uh, as a pre-intervention and 
uh, days uh, two and three as the post. Uh, the, part the participants were evaluated for dyspnea severity using the modified 0 to 10 Borg uh, dyspnea scale or MBS every day. Uh, all patients received this scale in textual and visual form after uh, sitting for uh, five minutes at the resting mood and walking 15 meters while wearing a finger uh, uh, pulse oximeter uh, at the activity mood. Uh, and then the patient were asked to uh, rate their uh, severity of dyspnea on a scale of uh, 0 to 10. And for SpO2, it was measured during oxygen therapy and also after five minutes without oxygen therapy uh, using the same pulse oximeter. In both conditions, uh, the, uh, the pulse oximeter was worn on the finger and uh, the SpO2 value was recorded after uh, two minutes. Uh, the criteria for a study termination were uh, uh, SpO2 drop of more than 15%, uh, uh, deterioration of more than 20% uh, in the severity of uh, dyspnea based on the MBS and uh, need for uh, treatment regimen change according to the uh, medical team. Well, uh, all the collected data were analyzed using the IBM SPSS software version 26 in two unlabeled groups as we wanted to blind the analyzers. Uh, this pilot was a study. It was uh, this pilot study was conducted to estimate the sample size needed for the future studies due to lack of data and innovation of the uh, method used. Uh, well, uh, unpaired test was used to analyze uh, all variables between uh, the groups. Uh, on an one-way ANOVA test was applied to analyze the variables of age group between the various days uh, and uh, statistical significance was set at uh, less equal than uh, 0 0.05. The Ethics and Research Committee of Kazan University of Medical Science approved this study. Uh, informed uh, written consent was obtained from all participants following a detailed explanation of examination and uh, the study procedures. At the end, 86 uh, patients were selected uh, and of whom three patients were refused to participate, participate in the, uh, the study. Two patients were excluded from the intervention group due to, the, due to their reluctance to continue the evaluations. Uh, one patient was also excluded from the control group after the second day as a result of a change in his uh, treatment regimen. And finally, uh, 80 pa patients, including uh, 49 men and 31 women, completed uh, the study. Uh, the patients were randomly assigned to control and intervention groups. Both groups uh, received the same drug uh, treatment regimen determined by the relevant medical team and also uh, the announced follow chart uh, of the Iranian uh, medical uh, Ministry. Well, uh, there was no statistically significant difference in terms of uh, their demographic characteristics, uh, uh, in including uh, sex, age, body mass index, and extent of pulmonary involvement on CT scan uh, between the groups, as you see here in the table. Uh, well, uh, this table uh, shows comparison of uh, MBS scale and SpO2 level between the two groups. Um, SpO2 value were compared between the two groups, uh, 12 participants, about 15% of them showed uh, no increase in the SpO2 value without uh, O2 therapy after three days, of whom uh, four uh, were in the intervention group, about 5%, uh, and eight, about 10%. Uh, was in the uh, control group. Uh, however, both groups showed uh, relative uh, improvement on days two and three. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there was no statistically significant difference uh, between the uh, two groups on the first to third day. And p-value, uh, as you see here, uh, is uh, more than 0 0.5. And also, there was no significant difference in the dyspnea in the mood at rest or after activity between the uh, two groups based on the MBS on the first day. 
and uh, breathing uh, improved in the both groups on the second and third day there was no significant difference on the second day while a significant difference was found uh, between the bbe and control group uh, at rest and uh, in the mood after activity uh, on the third day of the trial and the p-value uh, as you see here is uh, less equal than uh, 0 0.05 Well, this figure uh, shows a uh, change in uh, O2 saturation level in the mood with and without O2 therapy between the groups, uh, and you can uh, track the O2 saturation uh, with O2 therapy in the intervention group uh, with uh, the uh, red line and the blue line uh, for control in the mood with O2 therapy. And uh, for track the um, O2 saturation without O2 therapy in the intervention group, you can uh, see the black line in the figure and uh, the yellow uh, for the control group. Uh, as you see, the SpO2 level in the mood with and without auto therapy after three days were better in the intervention group compared to the control group, but the differences were not statistically significant. Well, uh, this figure uh, shows a change in the modified 0 to 10 Borg scale at rest and after activity uh, between the uh, intervention and control groups. As you see here, uh, the blue and uh, yellow line uh, is uh, for intervention group and uh, you can see the differences uh, between the uh, days 3 to 1 uh, in the at rest mood is about five points and uh, at the activity mood is about uh, 4.5 uh, points and as I said uh, this uh, figure uh, shows uh, showed uh, uh, a significant differences uh, between the BB and control group in both mode on the third day of the trial well, uh, additionally, uh, for a more accurate assessment, the participants in case and control groups were divided into four subgroups based on their SpO2 value without autotherapy on the first day, uh, as you see here in this table. And um, the subgroup one uh, was those uh, whose SpO2 value was less than uh, eighty percent subgroup two was uh, those who, whose uh, SpO two level uh, was greater or equal than eighty percent and less uh, than eighty five percent subgroup three uh, was those whose SpO two levels was greater or equal than eighty five percent and uh, less than ninety percent and finally subgroup four uh, was those whose SpO two value was uh, less equal than uh, nineteen. Uh, person. Uh, all the intervention subgroups uh, experienced an increase in SpO2 levels on the second and third days except for uh, subgroup 4 that had a decrease uh, on the third day compared, uh, compared to the second day. And uh, the change in SpO2 levels in the intervention subgroups, uh, so SU1 to SU4, were uh, about 4.2, 2.3, 2.6, and 1.6 uh, with uh, autotherapy and 8.8, 4.2, 2.6 and 3 uh, without autotherapy. And you can see the detail of the H subgroups here uh, for a more uh, accurate assess. And as you see here, all uh, p-values uh, was uh, greater than 0 0.5. This uh, figure shows a uh, change in O2 saturation level in the mood with and without O2 therapy among the intervention uh, subgroups. And as you see, the subgroup uh, 1 uh, has experienced a remarkable increase in the uh, amount of uh, O2 saturation level after 3 days. Uh, but uh, 
Generally, after a three days of PB, there was no statistically significant difference in the SpO2 level change with and without autotropy between the same subgroups in the control and intervention groups. Uh, well, uh, dyspnea and uh, decreased uh, SpO2 are the most common cause of hospitalization in COVID-19 patients. As mentioned earlier, 20% of uh, COVID-19 patients need to be hospitalized due to oxygen requiring uh, uh, lung infection, and one third of them develop a severe form of uh, the disease. Uh, the most important cause of uh, disease progression may be long-term autotherapy injuries as well as a weak humus match. Uh, a study have shown that early PR can reduce mortality by clearing the airways as well as improving uh, lung capacity and thus improving gas exchange in patients with interstitial uh, pneumonia. In a study by Sunita Manjusha Das and uh, her colleagues in 2019, children, children aged uh, 3 to uh, 12 years were randomized to receive either a balloon or bubble therapy for 6 days. Among uh, 60 participants, uh, 29 had pneumonia, 17 uh, bronchitis, and uh, 14 had bronchiolitis. Uh, the study uh, reported a significant improvement in SpO2 after regular balloon or a bubble inflation. Uh, this finding is in uh, contrast to our study where the BBE group did not show a uh, significant uh, improvement in SpO2 level uh, in the setting of uh, with or without O2 therapy after three days of uh, BBE compared to the contrary group. And um, it may, a possible explanation is the difference uh, in uh, BBE days. Uh, in the present study, the severity of dyspnea uh, in the mood of at rest and after activity uh, reduced significantly after three days of BBE in the intervention group compared to the control group. Uh, these findings were consistent uh, with the results of a study conducted by uh, Renuka K uh, and her colleagues in uh, 2015 uh, that on the respiratory statue of uh, patients with lower respiratory tract disorders in the, this study, uh, 20 patients received balloon therapy for about uh, 14 consecutive days. Uh, and the dyspnea scale were measured, uh, was measured as a uh, pre and uh, post test. The study reported uh, a significant reduction in dyspnea after regular balloon inflation. Uh, combined with our data, it is suggested that the use of BB is useful in reducing the dyspnea uh, severity in the early days of uh, diagnosis. Uh, but you know, there is a uh, still controversy about uh, PR strategies in the acute phase of uh, COVID-19. Uh, since uh, breathing exercise increases the work of breathing uh, muscles and blood oxygenation alteration uh, leads to a rapid and shallow uh, respiratory pattern, Marta Lazari and her colleagues in 2020 recommended avoiding such a procedure in the acute uh, setting, but uh, in our study, none of our uh, BBE participants met the termination criteria, and also in the pre uh, in the present study, most of the patients in the BBE group reported uh, mild dizziness and difficulty inflating the balloon on the second day, and uh, at, um, finally, at, uh, almost all the patients reported an improvement in their ability to breathe and felt a strangle in their chest on the third day. The balloons were not replaced with latex gloves in uh, any of the patients, and uh, finally, in, uh, according to our uh, results, a BBA can be done safely in patients with COVID-19 uh, in the acute phase, uh, and furthermore, it is highly recommended that, that patients undergo a regular monitoring during the PBE uh, procedures. Uh, this study had several limitations because of the nature of rehabilitation and the assessment, neither the executors or nor the participants could be blinded. Therefore, it is not possible to rule out the placebo effect observer bias or experimenter bias in the current study. In addition, 
the subjects were limited to patients age, uh, aged uh, 18 years old and above. The duration of the intervention was only three days and uh, the number of participants was significant, insufficient in age group. And uh, eventually we did not measure uh, other variables such as the respiratory rate, pulse rate, lung capacities and anxiety score. Therefore, uh, we recommend future studied, uh, studies should address these limitations. Uh, according to the present study, uh, balloon blowing exercise is a safe medical intervention in non-critical COVID-19 patients. It uh, did not significantly improve oxygenation in uh, non-critical COVID-19 patients after uh, three days, but it uh, reduced the severity of dyspnea uh, and incorporation of it uh, medical uh, treatment. Uh, I, Mohamed Bargai, conceived, designed, and wrote the manuscript. Uh, Nafis Rasku, Fatima Aryanajad, uh, Sohrab Ismail Zad, and Arezu Bajalan, and I, uh, BB Guidance Data Collection and Follow Up of Patients, uh, Nafis Rasku, and Mehdi Ghaibi, and I, in turn, and analyze, analyzed the, the data. Uh, my dear uh, teacher, Soil, Dr. Soil Sultani, Romina Nemati, and I edited and reviewed the manuscript. Uh, uh, again, Soil Sultani and I directed and managed the planning and execution of project, and all colleagues reviewed and approved the final version. Well, uh, here is uh, Persepolis, an amazing and ancient place in my country in Fars. Uh, please uh, feel free to contact with me via my mail, as you see here. And uh, I hope you and your family be safe during the pandemic. Thank you for your attention. Bye.